Ready to crack the books again? All right. As we already know, liquidity is all about meeting current liabilities, while solvency refers to the ability to cover non-current ones. In this lecture, we'll take it a step further and analyze some solvency ratios. We'll look into the debt to equity, debt to capital, debt to assets ratios, as well as the so-called financial leverage indicator. Altogether, this set of multiples utilizes balance sheet items only. Professionals make great use of them when it comes to illustrating a firm's indebtedness at a given point in time. Okay, apart from these four gauges, solvency ratios also comprise some coverage metrics, such as interest and fixed charge coverage measures. This time, you need the income statement of a company to process them. Okay, we have some work to do. So, let's start. In large, all solvency ratios assess financial risk and leverage, but from a different perspective. That's why they should be considered collectively, not individually. By way of comparison, an organization's capital structure, along with the relative share of long- and short-term financing, explain the variations across firms and over time. Right. It's time for us to do some computations to see if SaleSmart bears a risk of insolvency. To begin with, we get the debt-to-equity ratio by dividing the company's total debt figure by its total equity. Looking at SaleSmart's statement of financial position, we see that it has short and long-term debt outstanding. Most probably, this is a long-term bank loan taken. We can now go ahead and calculate the total debt amount by summing up short-term and long-term obligations. This makes $29,474 million in the current year and $35,016 in the previous year. Total equity is also easy to get. So we obtain that the debt-to-equity ratio is 22% in year 3 and 31% in year 2. Obviously, the debt burden decreases while the equity capital increases. Before we jump to conclusions, we should mention that we can also estimate the total debt in relation to the firm's total capital, that is, debt plus equity, not only equity. We call this measure the debt to capital ratio. For sales smart, in particular, it is 18% in year three and 24% in year two. Furthermore, we might present the debt amount as a percentage of total assets. Turning to SaleSmart, its debt-to-assets ratio decreases from 21% in the previous year to 16% in the current year. As a matter of fact, debt is not a problem as long as the company has sufficient assets to repay the liabilities, right? Great. Nevertheless, plugging figures into formulas is a job half done. Most importantly, you must be able to extract indicative information about a firm from these results. Thus. Let us try to interpret these figures. Okay. All the three ratios we have just calculated show that SaleSmart experiences an improvement in its solvency indicators. Its debt decreases as a portion of total equity, total capital, and total assets. The firm hasn't taken any excessive loans in recent years and doesn't rely on debt as a source of financing to such an extent. Instead, equity financing increases which is evidenced by the equity section in the Statement of Financial Position as well. It goes up significantly by the amount of earnings that is accumulated and retained in the corporation. Perfect. Next, we move on to coverage ratios, which will further verify the conclusions we've just drawn. Why would we compute these, you may ask? Well, they illustrate the company's ability to repay its debt obligations with the income it generates. Given that SaleSmart hasn't incurred any significant debt, we can expect that the coverage ratios will not exhibit any alarming results. Once again, don't forget that you'll need the firm's income statement to estimate those. Okay. We calculate the interest coverage ratio by dividing the earnings before interest and tax, or the EBIT measure, by the annual interest payments. This shows us whether a firm's operating profit is sufficient to cover interest expenses. Nice. However, interest isn't the only finance expense companies keep an eye on. A slightly different way of analysis can be performed when companies have significant lease obligations. Then, we would add the lease payments both in the numerator and denominator. 
This is how we come to the fixed charge coverage ratio. In its core, it tells us whether the generated earnings are sufficient to cover all fixed finance expenses, including both interest and lease payments. To put it all into perspective, the lower the coverage ratios, the more likely it is that an organization will have difficulties in meeting its debt payments. Sounds reasonable, doesn't it? Very well. We better go back to our example once more. Assuming the following lease expenses and taking the interest costs from the income statement, we can check whether SalesSmart's solvency indicators are indeed affirmative. Owing to the fact that EBIT increases during the years, while both interest and lease payments decrease from year two to year three, both ratios are increasing over the years. Earnings before interest and tax are 8.28 times higher than interest expense, while the fixed charge coverage is almost five. An array of amazing financial results, isn't it? In a nutshell, SalesSmart is in a very good financial position in terms of indebtedness. It has lower debt outstanding and, for the most part, relies on equity as a source of financing. How outstanding is that? Okay, lastly, we will look into another widely known ratio, financial leverage. We can calculate it by dividing the average total assets to the average total equity of a company. To make a better sense of it, allow us to bring up the ratio analysis framework we showed earlier, the four W's, remember? Good. So what does this ratio show? Put simply, the financial leverage ratio is an indicator of the use of debt financing. Although you do not see the word debt in the formula, it is recognized by inference. Think of a firm's capital structure as an apple pie composed of debt and equity financing. The more liabilities it incurs, the lower the amount of equity and vice versa. SalesMart's financial results illustrate this concept rather thoroughly. Over that last two years, the debt burden decreased at the expense of higher equity financing, right? Then what does a change in the financial leverage ratio mean? Equity is in the denominator, which means that higher equity will result in a lower financial leverage indicator. But higher equity is analogous to lower debt as well. Remember the apple pie? Thus, we can conclude that lower financial leverage is an indication of lower debt obligations. This is an important rule to remember. Let's do the math with SalesSmart's financial data. We take the average total assets, either by employing an Excel function or by adding up the values in year two and year three and divide the total by two. We do the same for average total equity. So SalesSmart's financial leverage is 1.55 in year two and 1.43 in the current year. The ratio goes down, which is another confirmation of the company's decrease in debt financing during the past two years. The result is not surprising at all, is it? Great. We can now continue our analysis by asking, what's the norm? To answer this question, you will need to find out the average financial leverage ratios of competing companies and compare them to SalesSmart's indicators. Lastly, does this ratio have any limitations? Of course it does. It is as good as the quality of the published financial statements. It presumes that total assets are measured reliably. If figures happen to be somewhat sugar-coated, this will inevitably affect the data. Therefore, a savvy financial analyst would always double-check management's assumptions and valuation bases first. Besides, the ratio works with average values. That goes to say that, if either total assets or total equity changes significantly from year to year, it may be a good idea to perform some more in-depth analysis of the whys and wherefores. After all, companies strive for sustainability. Excellent. Now it is your turn. Please try to calculate the SalesSmart solvency ratios in the blank SalesSmart's financial ratio pack by yourself. Feel free to share the results with us. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching.